Okay, now I want to take just a few minutes to show you what the uh, report settings tab and the settings tab just below it will do for you. Uh, I have a job opened up here. Anything I want to change about this particular job here, whether uh, it's information here on the pipes page, the drill uh, profile, or the obstacles page, I can change that simply right here in this report settings. So I can change job information, uh, name, you can scroll through and see all the different things you can change, uh, default pipe lengths, first pipe length, last pipe length, any comments you want to make, um, and then who the client was for this job, uh, you can change that here. Uh, notice you can save information to a client list, and I'll show you that here in the other settings tab. And then last but not least, contractor information, which is you, so your company information here. Notice also on both of these tabs, either the client or the contractor fields, you can save a custom logo by adding that here. Wherever that image is saved, you would go find it, attach it, and it should show up here. It will also show up on your reports. So that's what you can do from within uh, the report setting. Now, if I click on the settings tab over here, notice those same three fields, job information, client, contract information, all come back up. Now what you can do here is if this is, if you've got a lot of clients or you create a client or you're doing the same job uh, like over and over, uh, you can save uh, all these settings as defaults or say you only have one drill or you may have multiple drills, but you can create different profiles that, you're, that are commonly used so you're not going back in and inputting the same information over and over. So from the settings tab, uh, for instance, like contractor information, if you were to go in and put all your information here, put your logo in, and then save as a default, that would always come up on your report whenever you're going to automatically email it. Again, uh, simple things like uh, colors and fonts, however you want them to show up on your report, uh, you can do that there. Units and settings, uh, however you want everything displayed uh, on your reports, you go in and simply select that. Again, remember, in order for that to save, you need to be sure and save as a default, and it'll ask you save as defaults, yes. So then if you go back into that area, you'll see that it's now saved. Um, yeah, the default settings tab here just simply brings up uh, either save all defaults, save as defaults, or restore uh, the defaults back to what they are originally. So that's what your report settings uh, tab and the actual settings tab do. Okay, now I'll take just a couple minutes to talk to you about what the print PDF tab is for here. This is simply, uh, if you were finished with the job, uh, you made no changes to it, you were happy with the profile, uh, you may or may not have had any obstacles you added to it, your pipes page. If I am to click on uh, print PDF report, say you just wanted to print this out in the cab of the pickup and hand it immediately to a uh, supervisor or a uh, uh, client you were doing the job for, inspector, um, whatever the case is. If you just click PDF, it's going to automatically bring up, uh, you know, the Save As box. Where do you want to save it? Uh, you can save it to the desktop if you'd want. Uh, be sure you name it. Uh, so that way it will be easily found. Once you click Save, it's going to automatically open up the PDF like it did here. You can see there's three pages attached to this. Um, basically what they are is it's just a, all the information that I talked to you about on your job settings, client information would all be here if you input all that, their logos, uh, all the pertinent information would show up here. Uh, it'll give you two profiles of the bore, one's a little bit more uh, uh, believable or kind of a spread out more of a view, uh, a little bit easier seen, it will give another uh, PDF that's a little more um, shrunk, if you will. Uh, and then last but not least, it'll include your pipes page, which will be found here. So that's what happens when you click print PDF report. Okay, now let's say all we want to do is simply email this job. We've finished it. Uh, we're happy with the profile. We've added any obstacles we need to add. All of our client uh, information is up to date. 
uh, job site information up to date, everything we changed inside the report settings. Um, all I have to do, uh, whether I'm on my PC in the office, whether I'm out in the field on my mobile device, uh, is click email. As long as you have an internet connection uh, or cell connection, data connection, it's going to open up your uh, email uh, carrier. And notice it's going to attach um, a .kml file. That's for Google Earth. If you happen to be connected to a GPS device and you captured lats and longs, uh, for each pipe, it would attach that file here. Uh, it's going to attach a .tsr file uh, for someone to view. Um, also, it's going to attach a .csv file, which is an Excel file. Uh, there's going to be a .gpx file, which is for importing and other uh, GPS applications um, if you were to have been connected to the GPS device. And then also it will create the PDF file that I just talked about in the previous version and then it's a, just a matter of uh, inputting the address to you want to send it to and hitting the send button so that's how the email tab works okay now the Google Earth tab um, right here again you do have to have Google Earth installed on your device uh, whether that's a laptop uh, tablet mobile device cell phone so uh, say you wanted to view this a job on Google Earth, the location of it, and again remember you would need to have captured uh, lats and longs so you would have had to have been connected to a GPS device. Um, so let's click on Google Earth. It's going to take you directly to Google Earth. It's going to pull you right into where uh, that bore was done. So really good little view here. Um, Again, this this is only as accurate as the GPS device that you used. This job here shows uh, our pins where we did this bore uh, underneath this rower track here. So notice if you click on a pin, uh, it will show you what pipe that is, the pitch at that pipe, and the depth. Um, and the time when it was captured, so in the lats and longs for that pin. Now remember, these pins, depending on your uh, satellite coverage, uh, how good reception you have with your GPS device, the accuracy of it, these pins can be very straight or they can vary a little bit you know, to the left or the right of the bore path. So uh, keep that in mind. I've actually seen some jobs that were very straight. This, this uh, example here is not the best example, but you get the idea of, what, of how the Google Earth uh, button works so okay what I'd like to do now is um, to show you how to add a caption to the to the bore profile I just showed you how to add a new obstacle so if I was to right click add caption it'll place a text field here on the graph I can simply click and drag it wherever I'd like um, wherever the the need is to place a caption uh, if I double click on that it brings up the properties box for that caption to where I can actually change uh, the text in that field now if you were using a mobile device, you simply push and hold with your finger on the graph. When you see the pop-up menu come up uh, for either add a new obstacle or add a caption, you just select add caption. Once it places it on the grid, if you push and hold with your finger again, it'll bring up the, uh, the box for you to actually change the text that's in that field. So that's how you would add a caption on your mobile device. Okay, now I'd like to take just a few minutes to show you how we would add a obstacle, a uh, utility, pipe cable, uh, whatever the case is, onto your bore profile. It can be done one of two different ways. Uh, you can simply click on the obstacles tab here, and if I was to click the plus sign, it would automatically put uh, obstacle one there. I can make comments about this obstacle here. I can uh, put the distance away from my punching point, the depth that utility or obstacle is and then the size or the diameter of that. If I go back to my drill page, notice it uh, added the new obstacle. I can actually click and drag on this and drop it wherever uh, I need that obstruction or obstacle to be. If I double click on it, again it brings up a properties box where I can actually name that, whether it's an electrical line, gas line, whatever the case is, how far away it is from my punching point, its depth, uh, another key thing I'll point out is the diameter. Even though uh, you may actually have the exact diameter of the obstacle, 
you may want to make it a little larger uh, just for simplicity uh, and for viewing on the report. Uh, if that's going to be any kind of an issue, uh, you can simply make comments here, uh, the exact dimensions of the utility, and then uh, you know that on the report it's larger for viewing purposes. Um, if I wanted to, if I go back here, a couple different ways I can delete this obstacle if I need, need to. I can right click on it, simply remove obstacle, it'll remove it. Uh, if I needed to add it back, I can right click again and add an obstacle. So basically that's how you would add an obstacle and change its property. Okay, now I'd like to show you how to simply add a pipe or delete a pipe from your board profile. Um, probably the easiest way to do this is if you are on your pipes page. You can simply click the plus sign here. This will actually add a pipe to the end of your bore. You can see here that it added pipe 43. In the comments box it shows that a pipe was added. Um, another way you could do this if you needed to insert a pipe in the middle of the bore. If you simply click on a pipe, say you wanted to uh, insert a pipe here in between 13 and 14. You can double click on pipe 13. If you click the plus sign here, it'll ask you do you want to insert a new drill pipe for pipe 13. If you click yes or ok, uh, you can now input those uh, the information you need there, whether it's the pitch, the depth of that pipe. Once you hit OK, you can see that it added uh, a new pipe 13 um, and it moved the previous pipe down one. So um, again, it adds a comment here and it also adds a little delta uh, notifying uh, whoever you're going to send this report to that you know information has been changed. You'll notice it removes WO from the field here which stands for walkover. Uh, one of the things that you can do, however, if you do not want to show this information, you need to make sure you highlight it and delete the information here. If you go back, you'll notice that the comments deleted. On your report settings, if you go to job information, scroll down to where this box shows show data changed. If that's checked like this, it will show the comments and that the data was changed. If you uncheck that, when you go back to uh, your reports page, when you print out this report, it won't show this delta symbol. Uh, it will not show any comments here. It'll simply add the pipe. Um, but again, it will not allow you to show that it was a walkover pipe. So you'll still have that showing. Um, one last thing, if I wanted to delete a pipe, simply double click on it. If you hit the minus sign, it will ask you do you want to remove drill pipe 44, click on that, and then you can see that pipe 44 has been removed. Okay, so this concludes uh, the tutorial for the new TSR mobile software. Hopefully you found it beneficial. Um, again, I want to encourage you to go through the user's manual that is on the software. Uh, it should answer all of your questions if, if they weren't answered in these uh, few videos that I made. Uh, as always, be sure you contact your local subsite electronics rep or ditch witch rep uh, for uh, further assistance. You're always welcome to contact uh, the product support group here within subsite electronics. Um, also, I'd like to encourage you to watch any of the other tutorial videos that can be found on the subsite electronics YouTube page because I think you'll find those very beneficial as well. Thank you for your time.